Hello everybody, in this video we're going to take a look at Flipgrid. So of course Flipgrid is a website that allows students to respond to prompts with their own selfie videos and it helps to facilitate discussion. And the cool thing about Flipgrid is as the teacher you can decide whether or not students are going to be able to see each other's videos. So it can really be a discussion tool or it can be a knowledge check just to see what individual students know. So Flipgrid is a, like we said, a website that allows students to respond to prompts to help facilitate discussion. Teachers can create groups or classes that are made up of topics or posts. Students will join your group and then respond to the topics. Each of your groups will have a customizable join code. Uh, and we'll, we'll take a look at Flipgrid from the student side here. So let's go ahead and jump into the student perspective here. Let me go ahead and sign in and look at Flipgrid from the student side. So I'm going to go into one of my topics. And so this topic is about graphing uh, linear equations. And this is exactly what the students would see. And so, of course, at the top here we see the title of the assignment. Then we see the prompt here for what the students are supposed to be doing. So in this case here, watch this video and then describe how to graph a linear inequality. Be sure to specify how to tell the difference between a solid and a dashed line. And of course, over here on the side we have a video as well. Uh, we'll look at all the different things that we can do with with a topic where we can add some, some more media, in this case a video, you can also do pictures, you can do links, so you can do pretty much whole, whatever you want. Then if we scroll down a little further down the page here, this is where we can record our response. Again, so this is what students would do, they'd simply click on record our response, and then from here they're going to be able to start recording their video. Uh, now as, as the student here, they'll need a webcam to be able to record what's happening on their screen. Uh, if, they, if they want to, they have more options here uh, where they can upload a clip. So if they have a video already uh, saved to their computer or saved maybe to their Google Drive, they can upload a video that way. They can mirror the video, maybe just flip it horizontally. Uh, they can decide whether or not audio will be on or off. And they can also do a screen recording. This is a newer thing that Screencastify has where you can capture your screen just like Screencastify or other screen capturing software. So you can actually have students do more than just a selfie video. You can also have them record what's happening on their screen. So maybe they can show the steps to, in this case, you know, solving a, uh, a linear inequality. And once they decide what they're going to record, they'll go ahead and click on that record button. It'll give us a little drop down. And then they start recording. They can add some fun effects and everything here with like emojis and they can do, uh, they can even have like a drawing board on here as well. And, you know, draw things. Uh, they can also turn on a whiteboard for themselves as well. So again, they can draw and use a whole bunch of stuff in here. And again, students will be, be able, I'm sure they'll be able to pick up the stuff relatively quickly. You also notice that up here at the top we have our total time remaining. Again, as the teacher here, we're able to, to give students a certain amount of time. We'll go into this in just a minute. Once they're finished recording, then they go to this next button down at the bottom right. And then they start recording. And, and that's a review. All right, so it will give us this review of our video, so you can trim it if you want to, or you can add more to the video if you still have more time, um, or you can just completely reshoot it if you want to. Then we'll do next, we'll snap a selfie that will serve as the thumbnail for the video. And again, you can just take a picture or you can uh, you know, select a frame from uh, inside the video that you made. And of course, you can still do all the fun frames and pictures and all that fun stuff. And once you're done, you snap the picture and that serves as the thumbnail for the video. And you can put in any other details that you want in here. And once we are finished, we say submit, and now that video is completed. That's the whole process for what the students have to do. So it's pretty easy for the students to do this, and it makes it nice and simple for them to go through and uh, do these little videos for you. Let me just say complete at the bottom. And now we see our video that's posted here, along with any others, would show up as well. So some important lingo to talk about when we're looking at Flipgrid here. Um, so groups are your classrooms. Topics are your questions or prompts that are, that are posed to your students. 
flip codes refer to customizable join codes that students can use to get into your group. Um, they also refer to non-customizable join codes that go to a specific topic. So you're able to share a link that goes right to your whole group or your whole classroom that you can customize. Uh, or you can even share a link that goes directly to a single question as well. Co-pilots are your co-teachers that can add topics and uh, view students' videos in a group. Essentially a co-teacher just like it works in Google Classroom, it works in a very similar way. And then finally, shorts are teacher-created videos that are not attached to a certain group or topic. So as a teacher, if you ever just need to make a quick video, uh, either just coming from your webcam or screen capture, uh, this is another way to do it. Things that students can do, as, as we kind of saw here, students can create a video with their webcam or they can upload a video from their computer. They can add sticky notes to help them remember what to say in their videos. And of course they can do all that annotating that we saw. With, there's a built-in whiteboard with different like backgrounds. And then of course they'll take a selfie to serve as their thumbnail. And a new thing that came out recently in Flipgrid is the ability to do screen recording. So like we saw, if they go into that more options, they'll have that ability to do screen recording. All right, so let's take a look at actually creating your groups here in Flipgrid. So let's go back into Flipgrid here. I'm going to go back into the teacher side. And uh, a, a quick way just to know if you're on the teacher side or not is if you have all these buttons here at the top. If you have all these buttons, you're on the teacher side. As a teacher, you can easily go in and look at the student view. Uh, if you go and click on your profile name when you're inside of any of your groups, so let me go down to groups here. I'll go into my, my ELA class here. And if I want to, I can go into, um, oh, I'm sorry, it's actually over here rather. Uh, you click on your, your join code here and when you hover over it, it'll say view as a student. And you'll be able to come in here and look at it as to see like what the students will see. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and create our, our new group here for us. So make sure we're under the groups section and we'll go under create a group. And from here, we'll go ahead and start to give it a name. So first thing here, we can decide whether this group will be private or public. If it's gonna be for your school, just for your students, keep it as private. The only really reason to use it for public is if you're doing something outside of school. Um, like I do a lot of trainings on these, uh, on, on Flipgrid. So if I'm going to like a, a different school district or something like that, I might use public. Uh, but for your actual practical uses, like with students, just use the private one. Then here we'll put in our group name here, so we can call this whatever we want. Um, so maybe we'll just call this one, you know, fifth period um, biology. Then we'll come in here and we can customize the join code here. This does this does have to be unique, um, and because this is going to be a custom web address. It's, a, it's a basically a new URL that you're giving it. Um, so it does have to be unique. So if you have a common last name like Smith, um, it won't be available probably, so you want to have some extra, um, some extra stuff in there, some extra words to, just to kind of make it unique. Um, so if I try to say, you know, fifth period bio, yeah, even that one's taken. Uh, so maybe add like your last name to it or something like that, just something to make it uh, more unique. So I'll call mine my last name, Neeson, fifth period bio. Then down here we'll decide how students are going to join into your group, whether it's going to be your, your student email so they can sign in with their, their Microsoft or their Google school email, or if you can give them uh, a student username to join in. In most cases, I think most schools will probably go with the student email. Then we'll do next, and this is where we'll add our domains. Uh, so these, this will be able to lock down who can access your your grids. So what we want to do is put everything, including the at symbol and afterwards, it, that pops up in the student's email. So if your student's email is at you know yourcityschools.org, you type that whole thing. So it would be at you know, your city schools.org, hit enter, and everybody that has an email address with that domain on it will be able to join in. Anybody that does not have that domain would not be able to join. Now you can also add a guest, guest password, pretty self-explanatory here, so you can add a, a password for families and guests to join the group. We'll skip that for, for our purposes here. Now we'll go to next, and if you have been using Flipgrid before, you'll have some topics that you can duplicate into this new 
group. Um, so if I want to, I can I can you know fly through here and look at all of the all of my old topics that I've used before, and I can copy them into my new class. And again, for our purposes, we'll just skip this. And just like that, we created our first group here in Flipgrid. So notice it gives us our link here that we can go ahead and just copy and we can go share this with our students. And of course we have a lot of integrations down here with other things. So we can get a, get a QR code, you can even get an embed code. If you use Microsoft Teams or Google Classroom or Remind, you can send this join link out to any uh, of those platforms. And of course students will be able to just to click on that link, jump straight in, sign in with their account, and then they're in and ready to go. Okay, so if I copy this link here, and I'll jump into a student account. So I'll jump into my example student account here. And again, he would, post, he would click on this link, however you get the link out to him, whether it's through Google Classroom or you just email him the link. However, however he gets the link, this is what he'll see. He'll go to that website and he'll be able to join in with Google. And he'll go ahead and sign in. And now he is in our class. That's all he has to do. Okay. And now, as the student here, he'll be, he'll be able to see all of his um, all of his his Flipgrid uh, accounts that or classrooms that he's in, all of his groups that he's in. So in this case here, we see as the student, he has five grids that he's a part of, and all the videos that he's made in the past for his various classes. So he'll be able to save this page. A good idea is, of course, to bookmark that uh, that web page so students can come back to it over and over. All right, so that's how we created a new group. Then we, of course, want to go into creating topics. So we'll fill our group with topics uh, so students actually have an activity to do. Uh, so we'll select what group we want to put the, a topic into. Then we'll just say click topic, and we'll enter in all of our details, and we can add in topic resources and attachments. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and jump into this fifth period biology class that I made here. And we notice, of course, there's nothing in here yet because we need to start to make some topics. So we'll scroll down the page and we'll go to create a topic. And from here, we'll go and fill everything in. So if we're talking about maybe cells, and what we might want to have is let's have students um, maybe find a blank picture of a cell and then it's their job to, to kind of point out each of the major components of a cell. Find a blank image of a cell. Then explain where each of the major components are. use screen sharing to answer this question. All right, then below that here, we can set how much time I'll give them. So this one's kind of a longer one, so maybe I'll give them five minutes to do it. Then below that here, we'll have uh, a lot of media that we can add to this question. So we can record a video where we're explaining the directions as well. We can upload a video if we have it sitting on our computer already. We can add a, add a video from YouTube or Vimeo. We can add images, GIFs, an emoji, a bunch of other stuff down here. And maybe in this case here, maybe we do upload an image. And we can go and grab something that's from sitting on our computer. Uh, or we can come in here and do a GIF. So maybe we would want to find a video, and again, you know, in this case, maybe we have a video already ready for us. We, we would just paste the link here in, uh, in this box. All right, so then going on down further down the page here, uh, you can set up custom topic access, so you can have basically have participants get to this topic from other places. If we go under more options, we have even more stuff that we can add to our topic here. So if we go under link, we can add a new link. So if we want to have more resources for students to go to, so like another website or maybe another video or something like that, we can add more links for them to do. Then below that we here we have topic status. So this is where we can decide the visibility uh, of a topic for students. So if we want them to actually go in and do this assignment, we'll leave it on active. Uh, if we want students to be able to see the assignment but not respond to it quite yet, we'll have it on frozen. Or if we want it to be hidden completely where they cannot see it and they cannot respond to it, we'll have it on hidden. 
Now next to that we have our scheduled dates and here we can decide uh, when this assignment will open up for students. So we can select a certain date for it to open and close, so maybe I'll set it for the 13th and have a close on the 14th and it'll only be available during those two days. Then below that here we have topic features, so you can decide how you're going to get noti notified uh, when students submit things. Uh, you don't have to be uh, you don't have to be notified if you don't want to. So you can just say never. Uh, you can decide whether or not students are going to be allowed to download and or share the videos that they make. So uh, for privacy purposes, you may want to turn that one off. Uh, then further down here we have more video features. All this stuff is fairly self-explanatory in here. So all these different options here, uh, you can decide, uh, kind of configure what students are able to do with their videos. And then last here we have feedback. So this is where we can have a little uh, rubric for ourselves. There's one under basic that's just kind of pre-built for you. It just, it just has ideas and performance. You can also do a custom one where you make your own rubric. Now, last thing in this uh, menu page here that's super important, if you want to uh, prevent students from seeing each other's videos, you'd want to turn on this one that says video moderation. So this is one will say new videos will be hidden from students until you activate them. Previous, uh, previously submitted videos will remain active. So when a student submits a video, it will be hidden from everybody else until you allow it to be open for others to see. Okay. And if you don't want it to make it available for others to see, you just simply just don't approve it. You can still view it, of course. All right, so then once we're finished here, uh, let me actually change this so it's going to be active so my students can come in here and do it. Uh, we'll go ahead and do create a topic here. And just like before, now we have this link that will lead straight to this topic. And we have the same sharing settings that we saw before. And we'll say all set. So that's how we create topics. And so of course, then from there, it's up to the students to go in there and do the video. So just like we saw earlier, the students will actually go in and go into that classroom. And so we go into, uh, find that classroom, there it is. So fifth uh, period biology, let me give this a refresh. And we see this cells topic here. And of course, we can come in here and leave this, leave his response about you know, the major components of a cell. All right. And we saw that just before. And again, that's all the students have to do. So students are able to, again, record themselves or upload a video that they made or do a screencast. Uh, teachers can view each student's video and the teachers can decide whether or not the, st the students can see each other's like we saw. In the group, teachers can see how many videos have been posted by students. So you you'll actually get a summary on the, on the teacher side here. Uh, when you come in and look at your, your classroom, you'll see all of your topics. And then if you go inside of that and go inside of your topics here, you'll see all of your responses here uh, under this section. So, of course, I don't have any turned in yet, but if, if I had some students in here, of course, I would see all of their responses start to come in. Okay. And just for as an example here, let me find one that has uh, some of that stuff actually in it here. So here we go. So this one has 12 responses, and I have all these videos in from these people. Okay. And of course, as the as the teacher, I can come in here and view any of these videos. Drop down here, uh, and there it is. All right. Again, you just click the topic and go into the students' videos at the bottom of the page. All right. Other extra things that are in in Flipgrid as well, because that pretty much covers the basics of what to know for how to create topics, how to create your group, uh, and actually get these things out to students. A couple of extra things to know. You can also do a guest code and co-pilots. So a guest code lets someone else edit your topic. So if you have another teacher working with you, uh, you can add a guest code. Co-pilots allow others to edit the whole group, so the whole classroom, um, and create topics, review videos, and provide feedback. So if you work with another teacher uh, or an intervention specialist or you know if you, a whole grade band, uh, you can have other teachers work with you. Again, just like a um, just like a co-teacher in like Google Classroom, for example. All right, and then the really cool stuff here in Flipgrid as well is there is something called the, the Discovery, and this is really cool because you can find tons of great activities made by other teachers, and they're totally free to use. So you can search for whatever you like. So up at the top of the screen here, we have Discovery. And in here, you can really just search for whatever you want. There's you know almost 25,000 topics that are on 
uh, that are here in Discovery, and again, they're free to use. Uh, you can scroll through here, and they have a bunch of like suggested things and like topics and different like uh, partners that uh, make like really nice, high quality activities. Uh, and if you scroll further down the page, you can see even more stuff. And all the way at the bottom here, you can see uh, the complete full list of the you know almost 25,000 things that are here in Discovery. And of course, you can filter by subject or by audience, or you can just do a search. If you find one that you like, for example, so if I let me just go and go in here and maybe I'll grab something from maybe the Minecraft Education, and we can see some popular topics that they've done. So if we're doing like a Minecraft activity here, uh, we can see all of the uh, details that are here on the on this topic that's pre-made for us. Uh, we can read through everything and that's in here. We can see all the resources and everything that they've attached to it. Uh, any integration notes they'll have uh, over here as well. And if you like what you see here and you want to use it in your class, we simply just go down to add topic and we can decide which classroom to put it in. So if I put it in you know, the biology class we made today, I can go into next, and it takes us into this same exact editing page that we were at earlier. And if there's some things that we want to change in here, if we want to give them extra resources or anything like that, it's all the same stuff that we just saw a little bit ago. And this allows students to come in here and do the topic that somebody else made for you. And again, all this stuff is, is totally free to use, uh, and there's thousands and thousands of items in that discovery library. And if you're already, go ahead and do update topic. And now this is available for my students to go do. All right, let me jump back here one more time. And again, Grid Pals is kind of another interesting thing. This is the social media aspect of Flipgrid. This is where you can see a map of all the other teachers using Flipgrid around the world. Uh, plus you, uh, plus their social media. And, and that's really uh, a big thing in, in Flipgrid is all the cool stuff that you can find on social media. So they're very active, like particularly like on Twitter, and you can go find a ton of cool stuff uh, on, on Flipgrid's Twitter. Uh, if you come up here and do Grid Pals, you can see all of these people, the dots are going to come up here, and you can see a ton, a ton of people that are using Flipgrid. And just to kind of pick one randomly here, uh, you'll see all of these like different individual dots here. It's actually still loading, there's so many. Let me zoom, zoom in a little bit here. And we can actually see, you know, any attached, uh, um, it's any attached social media, like from this person here, he'll have all his social media accounts and you can go see the different ways that he's been using Flipgrid. And so of course it's a very collaborative type of environment. All right, so that'll pretty much bring us down to the end for this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you have more questions, check out our YouTube channel for more information. I'll see you guys next time.